Oh my God, did you hear that there's a brand new Velma show? But this time she's brown. Oh, and Daphne is Asian and she has two lesbian interracially married moms. Shaggy, AKA Norville, is a black guy who doesn't like pot, which I guess is pretty progressive. I love that this show is defying stereotypes. And he's also a huge simp for Velma, who's brown, by the way. Fred is still an annoying white boy wearing an ascot. He's literally the embodiment of a hashtag toxic white male. Now I'm sure that you're assuming based on the little you know of me and the description of this show, that this is a show that I would absolutely love. And I'm sorry to tell you that that truly couldn't be further from the truth. Now, as a person who has technically cosplayed Velma, I do understand why Mindy was really into this as a concept. I used to wear very thick rimmed black glasses and it was an easy cosplay. And I looked at Velma, she was a smart person in the group and she's definitely a character that I identified with. So I definitely understand how she got there. But here's the thing about it, you guys. This show's not bad because of all of the changes that I mentioned, it's bad because it's not funny. Now you guys know that I'm not really on Twitter anymore. So I am not coming from the perspective of a person who, you know, just wants to hate on this and is seeing all the hate and wants to jump on it. I genuinely went to go watch the show and I found myself asking the question that a lot of other people have been asking when they watch this show, who the fuck is this supposed to be for? Like who exactly is supposed to be the target audience of this TV? show. But before I tell you guys how I feel about this, I wanted to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by my Patreon. That's right. I've got a Patreon. I barely mention it on here, but I do indeed have a Patreon page. <laughs> I use my Patreon as a way for me to have more of a direct interaction with my audience. I share a lot of private vlogs. I've got work vlogs that are available for everyone. And I've also got personal vlogs where I talk about shit that I don't really want to talk about publicly. If you've been following me on, on there for a while, y'all have seen and heard some things. If you've watched the last Patreon vlog, you you know that there have been some really exciting life changes recently and I'm so thankful to have taken a lot of you guys' advice and like actually shifted some shit in my life and done for the better. But anyway, Patreon is a great way to get advanced access to my podcast, True Tea with Cat Black. I'm starting to post the episodes in advance. I post the episodes right at the beginning of the month for my $5 members. And if you're a $10 member, you basically get these episodes as I edit them. You can already see February's episode if you are a $10 member. Anyway, if you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, you can find the link to my Patreon in the description box below where you can get access to all of my Patreon benefits. So before this show even came out, one of the most predominant criticisms that I heard of it was that the characters' races were changed. And a lot of people don't like that. They're not into blackwashing, or I suppose in this situation, brownwashing. And I hear all the arguments for that. And I get why people would say, why didn't they just make another show with a completely different IP? I understand where you're coming from. However, after actually watching the show, the fact that these characters are now of different races really is not why it's bad. It's bad because it's not funny. I mean, I kid you not, I watched the entire first episode and I think I chuckled like twice, genuinely. This is one of those shows where it's just packed full of like back to back to back jokes. Like every single line, is a joke. And the, the crazy thing about that is none of them hit. None of these jokes hit. I mean, and you find yourself asking like, who the fuck is this for? Like I can tell watching the show that it was written with anticipation that people would really dislike the fact that Velma is brown. I could tell that it was written with this sort of tone where they were trying to circumvent 
that kind of criticism. They're trying to sort of show, hey, you know, maybe Velma's brown, but she's like, not like all of those brown people who are like super sensitive. Like she's a brown person who's like, you know, could really handle it and can like hang with the toxic white boys. Like that's basically the impression that I got when I was watching this. I feel like this is written in a way that feels incredibly white appeasing, but it's also at some portions criticizing whiteness. But the fact that it goes to great lengths to kind of pander to that audience doesn't make for a good show. So one of the things that really frustrated me about this show is that it's full of referential humor, but I don't mean like referential humor as in references to pop culture. I mean like inside jokes that I'm positive people who worked on this show probably thought were hilarious, but when you actually put it in a show, it just doesn't really work. It doesn't work. The first joke in the entire show is this joke about the pilot episodes of TV shows. Now, maybe I'm just understudied when it comes to this, but the joke is essentially that there's a lot of gratuitous nudity in the pilots of a lot of TV shows. Maybe this is something that I just haven't noticed. Maybe this is a thing, but the fact that I kind of had to pause and think about that, for me at least, not a great sign. Now, you guys know that I have an animation background. I went to CalArts for character animation and I no longer work in the animation industry. I only worked very briefly in the industry and I worked on a, let's just say a very adult swim-esque studio. And one of the things that would happen all the time is that there would be jokes like that where you could tell that everyone in the room thinks that it's hilarious. And when you're working there, well, not everyone, let me back that up. It's not that everyone in the room thinks it's funny. It's that the showrunner or some of the writers think that it's really, 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 really funny. And you as the, you know, animator or colorist or, you know, whatever the fuck you were doing on the show, you're kind of just sitting there like, ah, I don't really think this is good, but this is my job. So I'm gonna pretend that it's hilarious. And I kind of got the impression watching this that there were probably a lot of jokes that weren't really workshopped, but were hilarious within the context of the crew. And by the time they got to it, it was too late to fix it. A lot of this show is just for me so painfully unfunny, like so painfully unfunny. And it's frustrating for me too, because I actually really like the animation. I like the style of it. I actually think for adult animation, it's some of the better stuff out there. Cause there's a lot of dog shit, adult animation. Let me tell you, I mean, I, I don't know why so many shows are getting greenlit now, but there are s just so many bad adult animation shows. And for me, the animation is some of the better stuff. It's a shame that it was wasted on this particular project. Now, when it comes to the jokes, I could tell that they were trying to circumvent the people who are going to watch this show and be angry with the fact that Velma is brown. There's one joke that's been going viral that is, I speak truth without a filter like comedians before Me Too. Who the fuck is that for? Like you're supposed to listen to that joke and be like, oh yeah, everyone's like too sensitive these days. You know, like you're supposed to laugh at that. And who are the people who are probably watching this who may potentially laugh at those kinds of jokes? The kind of people who are gonna be offended by the fact that Velma has brown skin. And there's another joke that I think is like a little bit less bad that is kind of about how everyone is calling everyone who disagrees with them a Nazi. And it's just one of those jokes that for me didn't really have a punchline, but I think it's probably really funny to some of the conservatives out there who also agree, which of course isn't really what's happening. Some people are genuinely talking about the normalization of white nationalist ideas within this country, within the government, you know what I mean? Like, that's what usually people are talking about, stuff that does truly get quite close to Nazism. But if you're a conservative, you think that that's what people are saying. Oh, everyone's so sensitive. Everyone's calling everyone a Nazi. And that's why you would think a joke like that's funny. A lot of conservative jokes are just saying conservative talking points confidently 
and you're supposed to like, hear the person saying that and be like, oh, they're so brave for saying that. And that's kind of the impression I got from some of these jokes, like the Me Too joke, who listens to that and thinks, oh yeah, it sucks that like women are speaking out about their abuse and that some comedians who have abused women now have to deal with that. What's the joke? Like, honestly, what's the joke? And I've talked about this several times, you guys. I like comedy. I like offensive comedy. I go to comedy shows all the time. Some of the shit that I laugh at, y'all would probably convict me for, frankly. But, <laughs> but you know, like, this is just not it for me. Watching the show, it's kind of annoying to me how many people are like, oh, this show is woke. Because what the fuck do you mean by that? Is woke just the presence of a person of color because if you mean woke like progressive it's not really that yes there are queer people in the show yes there are people of color in the show and i guess for a lot of people that's woke now let's forget the fact that woke is actually a term that black people use to talk to each other about the realities of white supremacy in america and the fact that people like to twist it into essentially describing anything a little bit progressive is just you know Par for the course for people who want to deny the reality of white supremacy. Like, let's ignore th that part. But like, this show is not woke. It's not woke by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, Velma is canonically bisexual. Daphne is canonically bisexual. She has lesbian parents. And there's a lot of stuff <laughs> in it that is, I guess, progressive. But I don't know if I would really describe this as a woke show. And one of the things that got me was I watched a couple of interviews and I was shocked, absolutely shocked to hear Minnie Kaling speak about how she was trying to be respectful of the IP. Apparently, they, as people who were signed with WB, got access to Scooby-Doo as an intellectual property, and they were able to put together a show. It's just interesting because I felt like this show didn't really, I mean, it took the stereotypes of these characters. It took a lot of the kind of iconic aspects of their personality. Daphne is hot. Fred is rich, Velma is a nerd. Like it did those sort of things, but like it just, to me, it actually feels more like something that was written by a person who actively despises Scooby-Doo. That's the way that I felt. And I think the part that's also frustrating to me now, now listen, I'm like not a nerd sink. I'm not nerd sink. I don't, I don't know as much about Scooby-Doo as I possibly could, but from my memory of Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo actually was really, really, really entertaining in that it was a children's show about mysteries and the mysteries were actually pretty interesting and, and, and quite clever. You could watch it as an adult and actually be really curious who the baddie is. With this, I mean, aside from all of the jokes, like let's just talk about the writing for a second. I do not care about these girls that are getting killed. I just don't, you know, like it's, not something that's keeping me engaged. It doesn't actually interest me. I'm not curious about it. I don't wanna watch episode three to figure out where it goes. It just is so low stakes. It's so background and I, and I just, I'm kind of disappointed by that aspect of it because sometimes I can get through a not so great show if the mystery is good, because I love mystery shit, you know? And so I can kind of enjoy it in that way. But when it's just so not that, it's a little bit hard for me to find the motivation to finish. And I have no interest in finishing this. And now I think it's important that we clarify that Mindy Kaling had definitely a lot of hands in this project, but she is not the main writer. The main writer is a white dude named Charlie Grandy. And he is cited by Mindy Kaling as being a really great writer who really understands the female perspective. She says that a lot over and over and over again about him. And you know, I don't really know that. I, I don't know too much about him or whatever. I just hated the writing on this. And I am so fascinated by 
what kind of writer's room this must have been because in all the interviews they talk about how they were so excited to have a diverse group of people in the writer's room or whatever but genuinely i mean <laughs> if you told me that this was written by a white man who wanted to make a stereotypical woke kind of thing and they like actively hated it like they actively hated the idea of a woke tv show that's what this would feel like to me it feels kind of like that it feels like someone doing a parody of what a woke Velma would be. That's what it feels like to me, at least. And that's partially because a lot of Mindy Kaling's humor is simultaneously criticizing whiteness, but also pandering so heavily to it. You know, Fred as a character is supposed to be the dumb, white, rich, entitled guy. And there's a lot of criticism that she has of him in that way. And I, I get why that exists in there, but then she takes every moment she can to talk about how hot and sexy he is and how much she would really like to see him naked. But at the same time, she despises the fact that he's an entitled white man. She despises the fact that he's rich. Like all of these things, I guess, like exist in people in the real world, but it's kind of dizzying in a way. I think that she's playing to both sides of the conversation. To some degree, I feel like she's on one hand pandering to the audience who really, really likes that Velma is brown. And on the other hand, desperately pandering to the side of the audience who really just wants her to be white, you know? And it's really bizarre because it, you don't really know how to place her. Now, I will state that this is supposed to be a prequel. I think a lot of people don't get that, for example, the reason why Shaggy's name is Norville is because that's who he is right now in the story. This is the story of Velma assembling the mystery gang and eventually Norville will become Shaggy. Now Norville is decidedly anti-drug and I'm pretty positive in the future, the black character is going to develop a weed habit. And I'm sure that there will be hilarious hijinks related to that. But I feel like that's an important thing. I don't want to defend it too much, but I think that's an important thing that a lot of people miss that yes, these are characters that are changed, but these are also supposed to be characters before we really knew them as the mystery gang. Now, one thing I'm going to say is that I think Mindy Kaling is incredibly passionate about representation and listening to her interviews i can tell that she really 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 actually wants to do this and one of the things that was important for her was bringing representation to american south asian people she didn't want to do a immigrant story she feels like that's typical it's been overdone she wanted to do a story for people who are the descendants of more Americanized South Asian people. And I think that that's valid. I think, however, that it's just not funny, you know? And that's just the part that I come back to over and over again. I don't really know too much about Mindy Kaling's history. I haven't seen her really in anything other than The Office. So maybe she's better in other things. Maybe the way that she writes or whatever in other things is a bit more authentic. And with the way that these things work, it wouldn't shock me if she had a lot of ideas and then those ideas were stopped. To me, it's super clear that Mindy Kaling really cares about representation. And I support her in that because I do think that representation is important. And like I said, I really don't think the worst part of this show is that Velma is brown and Daphne is Asian and Norval is black and smokes weed. I don't think <laughs> that that's actually a bad part of this. I think it's bad because it's just not funny. But here's the thing, you guys. Like I said, there's a lot of dog shit adult animation out there headed by white men who get to make mediocre art. They get to make shit that doesn't look good, isn't funny, and doesn't go anywhere and usually gets canceled after the first season. They are allowed to make bad art. They are allowed to make mediocre art. And I want for 
people of color to have more opportunities to make mediocre art. I don't think that people should look at this and say, oh, well, that's why we can't have a, you know, South Asian lead. I know that Mindy Kaling's feelings on this are that people just don't want to see a brown girl win. And I wish that, that I wish that's what it was. I really wish I could say the reason that people are receiving it negatively is because it's about a person of color, but that's not the case here. It's not funny objectively. It is objectively not funny. I would be shocked to find a person who watched this show and like loved it and thought it was hilarious. I really would. It was interesting watching some of these interviews because the people that are interviewing are like, oh, it's so funny. And I'm just like, wow, like maybe I, I do have a strange sense of humor. So maybe I, it just doesn't land for me specifically, but I had a hard time imagining how anyone could find it funny. And I'm not trying to be dramatic or whatever. It's just genuinely hard for me to conceive of someone actually finding this to be entertaining. I think Mindy Kaling should be allowed to make bad art, but you couldn't even pay me to watch the rest of this show. I just have no interest in finishing this or seeing where it goes. It's just not funny. It was quite painful. I fell asleep my first watch through. My boyfriend was kind of annoyed with the fact that I was watching it because it was just so not funny. And it's just, it just, it didn't hit. It didn't hit. And like I said, it's unfortunate because the, I think the art is good. I think the animation is good. I know that people worked really hard on it and you can tell that people worked really hard on it, but this just isn't it, sis. It really just isn't it.